Hi, I'm Melissa Charter, and I'm here with Carl Lopes over at Barnstable High School. Carl, you are the art department head. I'm going to get your title all wrong. <laughs> Why don't you say what your title is? I'm the department head for the Art and Applied Technology Department here at Barnstable High School. Right, which is a lot that you do here, covering all the departments, all it's the students. It's a big department. It's, it's a very big department with all sorts of cool things. Of course, we're here in your classroom with these wonderful works behind us, and the students really run the gamut. I'm looking, o looking over at some metal sculpture mm -hmm. to this type of work. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about what the students do here in the class. Well, in my classroom, we teach, uh, I teach Fine Arts 3 and Fine Arts 4, and you see some paintings behind us that are self-portraits that are done with acrylic paint. This was an assignment where the kids were not allowed to use a brush so they did this mostly with their fingers. That fascinates me. And these two pieces are going to be in the show too. And our st students are right now working on nail sculptures and some of them are getting ready to start on murals that are going to be put uh, throughout the school and on different walls throughout the school. Oh, how exciting. Plus our program has fashion design, it has graphic design, we have animation, filmmaking, woodworking, Yes. It really runs the gamut. It really does. Ceramics as well, I believe. That's true. Yep. And mm -hmm. our viewers, we're here today to really talk about where a lot of this artwork will be showcased with mm -hmm. your senior students over at the Geyer Barns. Yes. And that is a show, a show I look forward to every year. You've been doing it for a long time. And what's thrilling about it is that really the students do it from start to end. They come up with the name. They have to pick the pieces. True. They have yep. to figure out how to curate it, how mm -hmm. to staff it. Mm -hmm. and all of that, which is a huge learning process for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we try to do is put the students in a situation where they are in control and they understand from start to finish what it is to begin the concept of a show, um, do the publicity on that concept, write the uh, press releases, send it out to um, people throughout the town as well as invite teachers, friends, and family. And then there's the logistics of setting up the show composing all the walls in the show and how it's going to logistically um, work for people to, to walk through That's and, right. and visually see the pieces. And then there's the opening, which is going to be Friday, May 3rd, um, from 6 to 8. And that will be where a couple of hundred people will come through and see the works so that the students learn how to rub shoulders with the public and talk about their artwork and express um, themselves and explain their techniques and explain their ideas. Um, so it's really a, a well-rounded gallery experience for a high school student. Absolutely. I think they realize, and, and I, I'm sure some of our viewers don't realize all that you described that absolutely goes into producing that show. So it's a tremendous um, experience for the students. And I love, too, as you say, that last part that you said is where they get to share and talk about their artwork. I love that. Uh, they're so excited with what they've done, what they've accomplished, and really um, the meaning behind their work. Mm. Well, one of the things that, that we have that's really helpful for the students here at Bonsville High School is we have the students critique their artwork. We critique on a constant basis. And those who are seniors, especially the ones who have gone up to the higher level classes like Fine Arts 4 or Ceramics 3 or our Cartooning and Filmmaking 3, they know how to talk about their works in terms of composition, in terms of color and value and texture and how the eye moves across the page. So they're able to talk about that with, um, with patrons that come to the gallery right. and discuss the work with them. It's, it's just a wonderful experience. I know they're looking forward to it. And I wanted to ask you if some of these students are going off to art school. If you find that a lot of the students that take the classes maybe never had thought that they would take an art class and it launches a whole new direction for them. Yes, yes. Well, we have, we have students who love art and have taken art for three or four years uh, who will be in the show. And um, some of them are going on to be art majors in art colleges and universities. And others are going on to major in other things such as science and math. Uh, and no matter what their major is, the arts as far as their creative experience has taught them to think outside of the box. Absolutely. Taught them to be a visual problem solver. So they can take that through life no matter what career they go into. And the ones that are going on as art majors have probably gotten into some really good schools because they leave here with a fairly competitive portfolio, which, which um, means that um, hopefully they have gotten some good scholarship money. Right. And um, we've got uh, students who have been accepted to Mass Art and um, Savannah College of Art in Georgia and um, um, 
other places that are very, very notable too. Right. So each year we put about 18 or more students into visual arts schools. That's phenomenal. But as you said, it, it touches anyone, no matter what that they're doing, the skills that they take away from so it true. Are, mm -hmm. are, are valuable throughout their lives. Mm -hmm. So the show itself, again, we will just go over that it's called Art Poc uh, Art, I can't say that either. <laughs> Artpocalypse, Artpocalypse, Color Explosion, and it is at the Geyer Barn. Opening night is Friday, May 3rd from 6 to 8. The public is invited to attend. And then daily, we encourage our viewers to go over to the barn every day, 2.30 through 5 o'clock through May 16th, with the exception of Mother's Day. But other than that, the Saturdays and Sunday, May 5th, um, the barn will be open to view the student artwork. So, Carl, I thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm here now with Emily Halesworth. As you know, we just chatted with Carl Lopes about the upcoming show at the Gaia Barn. And Emily, you are a senior here at Barnstable High School this year and a part of that show. Yes, we're all really excited and put a lot of work into it. So it's going to be a great show. It is. Gonna, now, were you part of helping to decide the name of the show? Um, I. We all sat around and um, kind of discussed our ideas. And it was pretty much a collaboration. It wasn't just one person's idea about... The, how he wanted pops of color and um, how he wanted color to represent our different styles of art and our expression, I guess. And so we came up with came up a with name, a name that was show that st the strength of our expression and yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. I love the fact that it's a collaboration. As you say, you all sit around and, and decide what you're going to do. And as Mr. Lopes said, there's all sorts of assignments and, and things involved with marketing and picking right. the works and all of that. I'm sure you divvy up how that's all done. Right, we were all assigned different jobs, whether it was contacting town council or school council members or hanging up signs around the school or making name tags for the show. There's a lot that goes into it. So. And now, have you taken art all four years while you're here, while I, you've been here? I have not. I took Fine Arts 1 and 2. Last year, I was in Fine Arts 2 as a junior, and then I was put into this class due to scheduling, but I feel that Fine Arts 2 prepared me well enough to be in Fine Arts 4 without taking Fine Arts 3. Right. And what have you gotten out of the, out of the class for you personally? Everything. Like, before high school, art was not even on my radar and now art is a huge part of my life and definitely helps with all areas of school. It's not just something to do on the side, it's definitely something that can be applied to all subjects. Right, and now we're looking at one of your beautiful works here, this is a portrait, and as Mr. Lopes said as well, you don't use brushes. Now why is that? Um, well, without using brushes, it f kind of forces us um, like destroys the barrier between you and your work so we just had to basically do everything with just our hands and paint and water and if we want to use q-tips and I used q-tips and I didn't like it I loved using my hands I was happy I got to do it and you have to learn how to like what finger works best for what you're trying to paint what you're trying to show so it's a learning experience. Yes. And is this one of the pieces that will be on display at the show? Yes. And was it a tough decision for you to pick out? Because how many pieces will you have on display? Um, it wasn't really hard because I know which ones I've worked hardest on and which ones I feel like deserve to be in the show. So it wasn't a hard decision. I'll probably have around five pieces. And five. So well, that's good that it's not hard. And yeah. I guess there's not any one favorite then. No. <laughs> Can't pick a favorite. And what do you think motivates you? Um, it is difficult to get motivated, but once you start, you get, you find inspiration while you're working. So it's hard to just say, this is exactly what my piece is going to look like at the end. You start working, well, at least for me, I start working and then I progress and then eventually I come to a final piece. I see. And eventually. now do you have a particular medium that you enjoy working in best? Is there, is there such a thing as a favorite with that for you? Um... I don't know, it really varies. Sometimes I really like using pencil, sometimes I like to paint. I guess I'm just, I'm still learning all the new mediums, so I haven't mastered one yet. So. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's been a fantastic experience for you. I know that I look forward to seeing your works and those of your classmates uh, and students in other departments in the show, and I thank you so much, Emily. Thank you for having me. 
I'm here with Ella Sampu and Thomas Cunningham. They have joined me to talk about some of their artwork that's going to be in the Student Art Show at the Geyer Barn coming up May 1st through the 16th. Thanks to both of you for joining me. You. And we have here, this is just one of the works that will be in the show. These are portraits that are from the Memory Project. I love this project that the students do every year. And I'm hoping that you can tell our viewers a little bit about what the Memory Project is about. OK. Well. Um, Every year we get sent pictures from orphanages around the world. This year was Vietnam and we receive a photograph of the child and we paint or draw or sketch out that portrait and send it back to them. Do you accompany that with a letter or is it just their portrait? We have written letters in the past but this year they asked us just to send a picture of ourselves back. Oh that's nice. How does it feel to you to be a part of this project? Um, you know it's it's really cool to know that your artwork is going somewhere else. It's going, it's going abroad. It's going to a different country for others to appreciate. And I, there was a video that accompanied the project when the kids received the artwork. So to see everyone's like sharing them and pointing out each other, to, it was awesome. Yeah. To see what. It must be a thrill for them to and their little kids and to, to be so excited to receive the picture of themselves and then to see a picture of you and who yeah. actually drew it is, is something very special. Um, what did you, um, what other pieces do you have in the show this year? Oh, a lot. I haven't gotten them all collected together yet. I have a couple still lifes. I'm going to have a couple self-portraits, some landscapes. I'm thinking about adding some photography. It's a lot. And same for me. I have a couple portraits. Or one of them's right <laughs> oh, here. Oh, look at that. And then um, also this one as well. And maybe a couple photographs and a sculpture as well. So do you have a favorite medium that you both like to work in? I really like acrylic. And why is that? Um, I, it's just pretty easy to work with. Um, I don't know. A lot would, of things you can do with it, too. I would say acrylic, too. Or most of my stuff, I usually pick a medium, get sick of it, <laughs> add another one, put a layer in another type. But usually I start off with acrylic just because it, it dries quick. It's easy to blend. and. If you, if you know how to use it, you can make it look more like oil paint or you can make it look, you can give it less depth or more depth that's versatile. I see. And do you put a lot of, uh, what types of feelings when you're painting? You know, are your feelings in there on the canvas or is it just a painting? Is it, does the feeling come afterwards? Does the feeling come before? It, <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes I'll start painting and then I'll, I'll get angry and then I'll notice like I'm getting a little rough with the brush strokes and stuff and then I'm like, okay, calm down. Like... Just give it a break a little bit and then come back to it. So it's it's interesting to see how like your mood affects how your yeah. painting turns out. Sometimes if you just start to draw, you give a visual representation of how you feel. And then sometimes the drawing itself makes me frustrated. So it, like like Thomas said, like you might get, you don't know how to fix what you're working with. And so you put your emotions into your art and then your art evokes emotions from you. Very well said. Well, I thank you so much for your time. I really look forward to seeing your work at thank the show. You. And again, for our viewers, you can meet all the students and see their wonderful wide array of work at the Geyer Barn coming up this May 1st through the 16th. You can get more information right online about the show at highartsdistrict.com. And we're wishing you all an artful day.